Hey guys, so I know this video is long overdue and I apologize that it's taken me this long to upload it. I ran into so many road bumps trying to film this and it was just my uh, camera battery charger died and I had to order a new one and in the meantime I tried to film it with my phone but as you can see my phone's busted and the quality was horrible and trying to edit was a nightmare because it was like a two hour video and so yeah I'm just refilming it. <laughs> um, but yeah. So, I, so I'm going to kind of turn this into a frequently asked questions video because I don't remember all the questions that you guys asked me originally, but I do remember some of them, so I'll see what I can do. <laughs> my name is Reagan. I am 17. I live in North Carolina, and I have my horses on my property. We've lived here for two years, two, three years, two years, two years. <laughs> um, and yeah, I have been riding horses since I was eight or nine-ish. I started on a family friend's Clydesdales. I never had pony days. I just started on the big guys. And I got my first horse when I was 12 or 13-ish. She was a 16-hand, 18-year-old thoroughbred. <laughs> She was the best first horse I ever could have asked for, and we ended up selling her three or four years ago um, to a family that just absolutely loved her to death. They had four little girls that just played with her all day long, and she passed away last year, I believe, in October just due to complications of old age, but she was seriously the sweetest mare. Her name was Bella. I don't know if I mentioned, mentioned that, but she was just the sweetest mare I ever could have asked for. And three years ago, we got Foxy. And Foxy's registered name is He's a Foxy Heathen. He is a 16-year-old 15-3 paint horse gelding. And he basically introduced me to the horse show world. And I cannot explain how lucky I am to have him and he we did the um, all-around stuff on the open show circuit so we did Western Pleasure or attempted to do it <laughs> uh, horsemanship equitation hunter on saddle and uh, showmanship and he is just such a good-hearted gelding I absolutely adore him um, and right now I still have him and right now he is kind of just enjoying the fat and happy life because I've been focusing on showing Elliot and I show him when I can but he's just enjoying his life eating grass and just being a pasture puff. <laughs> he still gets ridden and he just he's happy. <laughs> um, and so two years ago we got Elliot. registered name is HD Vintage Investor. He is probably 16-1 now and he is a four-year-old quarter horse gelding and we got him two years ago as a two-year-old and he um, he and I currently do the kind of all-around, we're leaning towards all-around, but um, we do the hunt seat, equitation, and showmanship on the AQHA circuit and he just, we've, oh, we've done everything together. He just, watching him grow has been absolutely insane. Um, one of the questions that I got a lot actually was my goals with him and I would love to one day go to Congress and Worlds but that's I know that's kind of like a big expectation so I'm just kind of putting that dream out there and just kind of hoping <laughs> and working for it of course um, and then one year ago we got Jessie she's the third horse that we have here <laughs> Um, she is just a pasture mate. She is, let's see, 16 year old, she's probably 16 to uh, quarter horse mare. And she is the gray horse that I post about every once in a while. And one of the questions, I actually got asked a lot, why don't I ride her? Uh, what do I do with Jessie? Why don't I work with her? You know, why don't I do Liberty? Stuff like that with her. And Jessie probably, oh her registered name is Isa Reber. Um, but a couple years before we got her, she stepped in a post hole and broke her knee, and she was retired sound enough to do 
um, or to be bred and kept as a broodmare. She's had a couple babies. I don't know how many, but they're really nice babies. <laughs> um, and so right now she's just Foxy's pasture mate because he gets separation anxiety and can't, can't be kept with Elliot due to getting attached. And it's just a nightmare. <laughs> um, but she literally just, like Foxy, likes living her life. I mean, there's, she's 16, had a bunch of babies, used to do the A-Circuit Hunters. There's no reason why she can't just be retired and live her life. Um, but yeah, I don't do Liberty with her just because I don't want to. And that's just my decision. Um, I work with her every once in a while just to get her more comfortable in her surroundings um, and more trusting. But I don't post about it because I don't feel that I need to. Um, and I don't like being pressured to post about every aspect of everything. <laughs> um, but yeah, so oh, I'm trying to think of some other questions I've been asked. Let's see, let's just dive right into the questions that I get a lot on Instagram. Um, number one, I've actually gotten this one a lot recently, and this has just been recently. I don't know where this is coming from, but do I ride English ever, and do I jump? So let's address that in two parts. Yes, I show English, like that is what I do, I ride English. Um, and my work saddle, which is probably why people are not understanding that I ride English, my work saddle is literally just my work saddle. Like I don't, when I ride Elliot in my Western work saddle, it doesn't mean I'm riding Western, if that makes sense. Like I'm not asking him to jog and lope and all that. I'm literally just riding in my work saddle, but still asking him for his English gates and all that. Um, and that's, it's just more comfortable. <laughs> honestly. Um, but yes, I do ride and show English, um, except for the occasional horsemanship, of course. Um, and why don't I jump? There's kind of two parts to this. Why don't I jump and why don't my horses jump? I do the AQHA hunt seat, which is not jumping. Um, and my horse is four and I don't believe that he needs to be jumped yet. And I want him to have a solid foundation on the flat. And um, if we ever jump in the future then I'll leave that to be a decision in the future I'm not gonna decide that right now um, because he is bred to be you know an all-around horse I don't need to pressure him into jumping he's really good at what he does and that's all I'm asking him to do right now um, I don't jump just because I don't have horses that jump I mean I'm not like oh I don't ever want to jump <laughs> like I do um, plan on riding some horses for a barn down the road just to get, like, I want to, what I want to do is just ride as many horses as I can, get as much experience as I can, and that will probably give me some jumping opportunities, but I'm not, like, one of those people that believes that jumping is all that matters. I actually really don't like that opinion at all, <laughs> um, but that's just me, and yeah, so that's that. Let's see, what else? Um, I'm kind of, like, my throat hurts. Um, another question that I get, <coughs> oh, excuse me, uh, kind of frequently is what do my horses eat? And I have had the pleasure of being able to just completely be in control of what my horses eat. At my old boarding barn, it was just the standard grain that everyone got. And I understand the struggle of that completely. And I kind of totally took advantage when we moved the horses home and I just like obsess over their diets. Um, Jessie just gets the generic stuff just because she's not doing anything. Um, she has reliance from southern states i'm thinking about switching her because i don't love how she looks on it um foxy is on legends carb care it's another st southern states brand um and i like how he looks on that and elliot used to be on that i just didn't like how he looked on that um so i switched elliot to neutrina pro force fuel and i absolutely love it he looks fantastic on it and he's not too hot on it um and he's not like sluggish it's just I think it's a really good grain for him um, yeah so that's that and then supplements wise Elliot gets um, farrier's formula occasionally some golden flax for his coat and uh, they all get mineral salt to encourage drinking and all that jazz um, and Oh, and Foxy and Elliot get glucosamine just to be of support of their of their joints. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit this question because I was I was kind of thinking of whether or not I want to address this or not, and I'm just gonna go ahead and go for it. The question that I get 
out of every every single question that I've ever had, the one that sticks out always is when I get asked, how do I make my horse's head go down? Or how do I train a headset? Or, you know, how to train a horse in general. This is such a... I could honestly make a video just on this question. <sighs> People tend to get offended when I say, you know, please don't ask me this. And when I say my opinion on these questions, and let me just be very clear, I'm not trying to say, you know, if you ask this question, you're being, you know, ignorant or stupid or whatever. I'm not going to call anyone out on that because I don't know people's situation. Um, I'm just trying to explain my situation and my opinion on it. A headset is not just something that can be explained over the internet. And it's not something that you can ask a random person and expect for their method to work on your horse. You know, like, I have... I've ridden quite a few horses and they all have a different way of um, asking for a headset. Like I rode someone's big jumper the other day and I had to relearn because this horse was completely different than what I'm used to. So I'm not going to put what I do out there and expect it to work for every single horse. That's just not, that's why I basically, I, that's, I'm just making my blanket, sta blanket statement that I do not believe in internet training because it's there's no solid method that's going to work for every single horse. You have to mold the method to each horse. And if some random person on the internet doesn't know your horse, how do you expect them to give you advice on your horse? That's just my two cents. So, yeah, I'm not, there is, to sum it up, there's no way for me to explain two years of hard work on Elliot in an Instagram comment. So that's that. Um, <laughs> um, so... Another comment that I get a lot is basically, what do I do? And that's a very valid question. Not a lot of people understand what I do. Not a lot of people understand why my horse's head is so low. Um, I show hunt seat, which the ideal frame for hunt seat if, is for the pole to be even with the withers. And I understand that a lot of people probably look at you know my show pictures and think I'm showing hunters. And yes, my headset would be too low, um, but I don't show hunters. And if I did, then I would bring the horse's head up but it is just that's what I show like it is a discipline um and basically what hunt seat is looking for is a big sweeping stride and like a flat knee in the front and a deep hawk it's hunt seat is based on movement um as is like western pleasure and stuff like that I don't show western pleasure um on Elliot he's just never gonna be he's not built for it and I'm a big believer in not um asking a horse to do something he's not built for um, and yeah, another question that I've been getting a lot lately is what bits do I use? And, um, this is not something, it's kind of tricky to say this because it sounds like I'm trying to be defensive, but in reality, I am just, I'm trying to, <laughs> I don't really know how to explain this, but basically my worry with putting what bits I put out there, I use out there is people will expect you know, oh, this bit achieves this headset, or because she uses this bit, I should use this bit, and it'll, like, I don't know. I'm trying not to make assumptions, but not every bit works for every horse. Like, a bit that I use on Elliot, Foxy just doesn't respond to, and a bit that is I use on Foxy would be way too strong for Elliot, and... It's just, I mean, it's all in how you use the bit, how the horse responds to the bit, all this stuff. And you can't just, you know, see, oh, she achieves this headset with this bit. That's just my worry. And I'm not going to put out there what bits. Because, I mean, really, there also are people that will say, oh, my God, she uses a bit. That's abusive. And I'm not going to just put myself out there and say, these are the bits I use. Please pick me apart and tell me everything I'm doing wrong because that is my number one pet peeve is people telling me how to ride my horse or what bits to use and you've never met my horse, let alone sat on him. So bye. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, other than that, my worst horse injury was last April, so two Aprils ago, uh, Foxy fell on me and it was... I cannot stress enough how much it was not his fault. 
Um, we were backing up and there was this hole in my round pen, which has since been filled. Um, and he does not have very strong stifles. And he, he's pulled them a couple times. It's just how he's built. Um, he stepped in the hole and tried to catch himself and then ended up just falling over into the fence. And I scratched my back all up and then he landed on my one leg and he didn't break anything. We don't really know how because he is not a small animal. Um, but my leg was basically completely useless. I'll insert a picture right here of what my leg looked like. And it's kind of gross. <laughs> um, but that, I was on crutches for probably three weeks, I believe, and I'm still having pain from that, which is why I got my little knee brace. Um, I've got some nerve damage and uh, muscle damage and stuff like that. We've gone to multiple different therapy things and nothing seems to be working. <laughs> so I'm trying to figure that out, but that's by far my worst horse injury. Where is it? My, I was just looking at my, uh, oopsie, I was just looking at my little really bad attempt at painting Foxy and I realized, oopsies, another question is Foxy's brand. Foxy has a star brand on his hip. It is a freeze brand. Um, no, he was not born with it, and no, it's not, like, temporary. I don't paint it on every day, because that'd be weird. Um, he, when he was, I don't know, when they do it, like, probably a yearling or something, the farm that he was bred at uh, does freeze brands, and it's basically just to mark, mark their territory, essentially, um, just so people know where the horse came from and stuff like that. Um, and yeah, there's those and there's hot brands. I personally prefer the freeze brands, but I'm not going to go out and freeze brand my horses because I don't have a reason to. Um, it's not just like a decoration thing. Um, let's see. Ah, I feel like this was such a disappointing video, but I hope it wasn't. Um, yeah, I apologize that it's taking me so long to upload. I just, I literally just got my new camera charger like a couple days ago. And it's been crazy with going to the state show in Raleigh and watching and all that. Um, but, yeah, keep an eye out on my Instagram for when I'll be doing new videos and stuff and all that fun stuff. Yeah, I think my next video, I'm going to try to make it the uh, little, you know, barn favorites or barn essentials or something like that. So keep an eye out for that and keep suggesting videos and yeah. Thank you guys for being so patient with this video. I appreciate it. I will see you next time.